Welcome to the airplane. Today we're flying a 1963 C model, Cessna 150. This is a really fantastic airplane. It's small, it's fun to fly, it's cheap to fly. It does have a few limitations because of its size, mainly in weight carrying capacity. And also the cabin is fairly small, so two large individuals can be a pretty tough squeeze. From a maintenance perspective, obviously there's a lot of similarities in the airframe to a 172, and it's a simple fixed gear aircraft with a four-cylinder, this time a Continental engine, and a fixed pitch prop. So, about as basic as you can yet really, other than, uh, unlike an Aronka, you've added an electrical system and some radios to it as well. Big maintenance items with this airplane to watch for uh, as the fleet starts to age is corrosion, like all other uh, metal aircraft. Traffic advisory for the area of... Uh... The other thing to watch for is a lot of Cessna 150s were used as training aircraft, so they could have a lot of hours on them and they may have had a pretty rough life with the uh, students and instructors that were flying them. Once they finished their life as a training aircraft, quite a lot of them were then bought as time builders for the private world. And uh, because of their cheap cost, a lot of them were not treated very well after the fact either. They were bought, someone would use them for lots of time building, and then the uh, aircraft uh, would just sort of deteriorate into a pretty poor state. So if you're looking at buying one, you've got to be really careful that you're not buying one that's got a completely worn out engine, brakes, tires all completely clapped out, interior destroyed, paint falling off, because you can fix it all, but you'll far exceed the value of the airplane, even in an excellent condition. So that is something to be cautious of. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad maintenance out there. There's a lot of annuals and maintenance practices that are occurring that just do not meet the standards at all. And while it's kind of good to know that the airplanes being simple and tough are kind of taking it, it's not a reason to to follow bad practices or to end up purchasing an airplane that's been badly looked after. Insurance is generally cheaper than four-seat aircraft simply due to the fact that there's two less passenger seats to insure. And the hull value being lower means uh, lower insurance premium when you're fully insuring the aircraft. So you're probably looking at the 700 to uh, $800 range. But with that being said, huge changes going on with insurance right now. And while just a few weeks ago we were looking at a 172 around the $1,100 range, most 172s seem to be renewing around the $1,400 to $1,500 range this year. So I would expect to see a uh, similar, you know, two to $300 increase in premiums for the 150 as well. In talking with an insurance broker, they indicated that a uh, amphibious 185 customer had seen their uh, insurance premiums more than double and had had over a $4,000 increase to their policy. So that's not good news at all. Now, this model has a pretty low uh, useful load. Most of the 150s do have a pretty low useful load, and we're like 450 pounds. So by the time you put uh, 22 and a half gallons of uh, usable fuel, uh, just over 136 pounds there, and then, you know, 200 pound person and some baggage and things like that, uh, you can run out of useful load in a hurry. So two big individuals, uh, you're not going to be able to take much fuel and no baggage. Two small people, just fine. This early model has the same fuselage as the Cessna 140. It doesn't have the boat doors and the big doors that they had on later models, so the cabin is very narrow. And uh, that means that when you know, you've got two reasonable sized individuals in here, there's not a lot of space between the two of you. So uh, you, you can end up you know, having to put an arm around, you, uh, around someone to give yourselves a little bit of shoulder room. So, you know, you, you, you've got a smaller aircraft, a cheaper aircraft to operate, and uh, you pay for that a little bit with uh, the, the load carrying and, uh, and size of the airplane inside. 
Performance-wise, the 150s, uh, are, you know, if they're in good shape, they're great planes. Uh, I look after a number of Cessna 150s, and um, there's some really great performing airplanes out there. I was unfortunate enough to do a flight in one I didn't look after. Uh, I was doing a bit of instruction, and it was not in good condition at all. And boy, it didn't climb. Uh, and it just was a complete dog. So, you know, condition of the airplane, condition of the engine, how it's been uh, rigged, all will affect the, the performance. Now, the early models, the C models and earlier, they don't have a rear window, uh, and they've got a, a vertical tail straight up and down, like a, like a 180 or 185, and, and they have a lot more cruise. They're much more aerodynamic. Uh, they've got a better aerodynamic properties than the later models with the rear window and swept tail. So they're generally about 10 miles an hour faster, and they perform better. The narrow fuselage also helps them not be too draggy. So, um, you know, I, I can see even today uh, at close to gross weight, at uh, sort of an outside temperature of six, seven degrees, I can see a thousand feet a minute climb in this thing at VX, and I can easily be looking at a 110 mile an hour cruise uh, if I push it along. Uh, we're just sort of bundling along a little slower right now, and uh, we're sitting just about a hundred miles an hour. So uh, most sort of M model 150s are probably going to sit around the 90 mile an hour mark. Fuel burn, I'm burning about five gallons an hour the way it's set up right now. Uh, if I push the power up and pick this up, uh, you know, you get five and a half gallons an hour. If we were to climb up to seven, seven and a half thousand feet, if we were really going somewhere far, full throttle, and uh, you can get it down to like just under four gallons an hour, and I've done that on lots of trips. I have done long trips in this. I've done uh, over nine hours of flying in a day uh, up to Capus Casing and back. I've taken it to Boston. Uh, and uh, while it is a small airplane, you know, it, it still works very well. Uh, I've even met and spoke with a gentleman, who he and his wife took their M Model 150 uh, all the way down to the, and out to the Bahamas for a few week vacation. So it's still faster than driving, and it's a lot of fun. So basically, you pay for the small engine and the cheap operating costs and the cheaper purchase price in being a little slower, a little more confined, a little less useful load and carrying capacity. But if you're looking, uh, you know, the Cessna called them a commuter for a reason. If you're looking for just enjoying flying and not breaking the bank, it's a really wonderful plane to do it. And the advantage it has over um, J3s, champs, cheats, things like that is it has an electrical system. It's a metal airplane. It can sit outside and take it a little better. It, uh, it has radios. We can fly in controlled airspace. So it's a little more versatile, but at the same time, it performs very well, and we can still get in and out of small grass runways and, and things like that. You have to be careful. Well, just like anything, you've got to be careful. It's not a Cub. You know, it needs a lot more runway than a Cub. Uh, and the later models need more runway again, but you can take them in and out of, you know, 2,000 feet should never be a problem for one. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're looking for some uh, enjoyable, cheap flying, the Cessna 150 certainly provide that for you. And um, not only can it provide cheap flying, but it still has the versatility to allow for day and night VFR flying. Don't forget to subscribe to learn about new videos that we've got coming up, and uh, please check out the rest of our content. Happy Tailwinds, we'll talk to you all soon.